If you're just joining us here, we had a police chase that led to a crash out. Three people have been put in handcuffs that appeared to be two men and one woman. The chase ended in a crash out right there at Crenshaw Boulevard and 54th Street. I want to switch it up a little bit. I had asked you last time, of, uh, I didn't ask you, you had brought up where you guys used to cruise at over there on, on Century and, 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 uh, and Vermont. Yeah. And, and, and it dawned on me after that, I'm like, this dude didn't even mention Crenshaw Boulevard. What was going on in the 1970s on Crenshaw Boulevard? Was that an established cruising spot yet? Or nah, that... nah, not yet. I mean, you had the wall by Crenshaw High, you know, after school, because that's where all the buses come. You know what I'm saying? The Crenshaw, as far as cruising and all that, that didn't really start popping until like, let me tell a story about the time in the age. Yeah. First going back into the history that made huh. Crenshaw Boulevard, named after George Crenshaw. White man, real estate is what made yeah. In the early days, started as a small gathering for the weekend, taking out your lady. Huh. Smoking on the herb and the oldies always playing. Making out with honey as you try to get a name. Yeah. Years go by, now a different time. time. Riding low riders, hundred spokes going around. Round. Now it's Sunday rendezvous. Welcome to to the 80s where the crack rock kit and the game shoot you down yeah. Crenshaw Boulevard, Crenshaw now, now. Crenshaw Boulevard, Crenshaw now. now Crenshaw Boulevard, Crenshaw now huh. The marathon continues, niggas gotta hold it down, down. You know, cause I mean, you know, everything back then, you know, especially in the beginning Like I said, wasn't the, like, like white men, they all older than us You know what I mean, the spot, and, and that was 79 uh, 7980 when we used to go up to um, churches on, on Vermont and Century, all the low riders, all the real niggas go up there. And just like Burger King on on um, on, on um, Jefferson and Crenshaw was a spot at one time. You know, we just show up. If you down from the hood, you get in one big red car, my brother car, uh, the slew wagon, or what you going where, where the action at? Simnel Park, we going up there. And so it's a whole lot of uh, things up there. You know, you talk about what, 40 years ago? Damn near, you know what I'm saying? 47 years ago, the whole bunch of moving parts. So, so, so look, for, for Ronnie Pace to name the block Arlington Gangsters, that's kind of blasphemy nowadays. Why, why throw the gangsters on there? Because there wasn't no war between the uh, 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 A-Trades and the 60s, you know what I'm saying? Hey, I mean, everybody wanted to be a gangster like James Cagney. That was just a, a verbiage back then. That was just some verbal. You know what I mean? They still your AG, Arlington Gang now. You know what I mean? Because, like, I mean, when, when that started with the eight trades in the 60s, uh, you know, you call somebody on Arlington, uh, like, man, you, you're Arlington Gangster. Now, gangsters live in the 80s, man. We hustlers. That's how that went. You know, it was just a transition. You know what I mean? That's all. You know what I mean? It wasn't like, uh, you know, but I mean, I mean, if you gonna get into if you gonna get into stuff like that, you would be asking niggas, uh, "Why your name Monster or something?" <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. That that it doesn't. You can't do nothing retroactively. Like if some started before some started, you can't go back. You so, know, just, so look, when you when you when you when you guys started claiming Arlington gangsters, was was that like a domino effect for for other kids on other blocks start? To, to, to have block pride like that, like Madden and Brian Hurst gangsters and, and all that. Did that, but, did that start that and kick that off? Look, look, when you say claiming, you know what I'm saying? I don't know about all that claim. I was claiming the Roman 60s, man. You know what I'm saying? I, wouldn't, I, I ain't never been stuck to no geographical area in the hood. You know what I mean? I function the whole hood. I, like I said, I ain't never been with the division. You know what I'm saying? If I go where I want to go, I fuck with who I want to fuck with. I ain't gonna switch up. You know what I'm saying? So I don't I don't get into that. That was just a description because we used to just hang on Arlington. We used to uh, shoot dice on Arlington. If you come over there and you ain't reputable, you're gonna get your pockets checked on Arlington. You're gonna get the, if you really weak, you're gonna get your ass whooped, coat pissed on. You know what I mean? And then all the niggas that knew about the hood in the beginning, from other areas, they come on all the big brick state on. No, know? the re the, re the reason why I bring it up because I I after face consolidates the hood, it's 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 one thing. I'm trying to figure out why did you guys even go that route to start having block pride and, and start and, labeling but, shit geographically. Why didn't y'all just keep it one solid thing and not was nothing one else? Solid thing, but it's look, you gotta always keep this in mind. Now, the hood always been like that. You know what I mean? Like 
Snoop them six out, Bayard them six out. It was just where you at. It wasn't like you wasn't seen. You barely seen AG roll on the wall. If you seen AG roll on the wall, it was rolled on round there, round Arlington. You know what I mean? We didn't promote that division. You know what I'm saying? AG MG just like the like Electric Avenue, Eleventh Ave. All blocks had names. You know that I mean? Brian Hurts was BG because of AG. You know what I mean? We were like they was a whole different group. Not when I was coming up, it was the it was the whole set. Victoria was Vic. You know, all all streets had different nicknames. You know what I'm saying? And then when other people start putting emphasis on their geographical area of that part of the hood, that's where the, the fissures come in. That that's where all the division come out when they put more emphasis on, on the street they grew up on and then the hood. My era, we didn't grow up like that. We was all on the same page. You fuck with one, you fuck with all. If you ain't down, you gotta go. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? And and that's how it went. So I can't speak on like like me. I started falling back like in the late 80s. You know what I'm saying? You know, because I mean, it was kind of like a different situation for me. And well, I'd say the early night, I still go through the hood and fuck with people, but it was just kind of like a different environment. And for me, I can't speak for nobody but myself because I was always living behind enemy lines. And everybody at that time knew who I was. You know what I mean? I lived all over the spot. You know, but I always fucked in the hood. You know, I stayed on 85th in Kansas briefly until they found out that all that shit pop off. You know what I'm saying? I've, I've stayed on Hoover in, in 70 for the most part. And then you got, you know, at my spot, you got everybody come through from the Keto Rocks to the Wax. Everybody coming through that motherfucker. You know, Gene keep killing them. So it was always uh, function. Then the whole hood always been, like, even in the beginning, you know, when niggas was wearing tailors and all that shit, the homies, was, all of us, kept up with the modern dress codes with the tailors and all that. But then my particular crew, we wore that and we game man, and we was the up and coming. You know what I mean? And then like, like then the leadership at that time was what, 17 years old? Now niggas ain't got all the questions, they ain't figured it out. All we knew was we had to stay down. See, like now when, when, when you build a brand and you got years of experience, any product that you build, you improve on it. You know what I mean? So now if, if, if you was a trailblazer and you cut the weeds down and built a trail and then during your tenature, you turn that trail into that road, then that road into a freeway, now here come everybody on the freeway. Now they may move a little faster and do this here and then throw up a billboard here, a sign there and say they made the hood what it is. No, you just you just continue something that's already been there. See, that, it's a difference between pioneers and buccaneers. See, pioneers gonna blaze the road and step back. Like like a lot of the homies don't want me speaking on this platform, but they like niggas let your story be told, but and all that. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, I just figured if y'all want the truth about it, this is what it is. You know what I'm saying? That 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 road that was already paid for you. You know what I'm saying? Now you can improve on it, but you don't have to shit on the next man. That just because he had a, a horse and a buggy, and now you got a, now you got a, a, a you got a car, a, a, a thing. You don't have to shit on the man with the horse and buggy that that made the road. Because at that particular time, that horse and buggy was the means of transportation. You know, what I mean? you don't have to shit on a man that had a, a, a zip gun. Cause and now you got a hundred cut, a hundred cut clip, and you can't understand how down that dude was because he had to walk around with a zip gun or no gun, flagging and putting it down and building that brand. And then you come along with a brand that's already established and think you're a superhero. See, superheroes get uh, uh, holes in your cave. I'm talking about the whole city. You know, every hood go through that. You know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, in the beginning, it was like, man, this head, you're doing more squabbling than you're doing shooting. And, we, and, and then to establish yourself, you had to go everywhere. You know, your face was uh, your passport. Your face was your ID. Your passport was your pistol, like, like, uh, my man, uh, uh, Skull, say for Frank Frank. That's how that go. That's one real shit there. Because we function. You know, then you have some people that just patrol the area. They didn't leave the neighborhood or whatever hood they from. They just patrol that area. But if you're going to build a brand and make it nationwide, you're going to put it down wherever you go. So, like, I got much love for it for every, from the beginning to the end. I don't take nothing from nobody. You know what I mean? I, I, and, and this is a whole lot of talk that I don't really be getting into. <laughs> But like, I was rare. You can't fool me. Because I didn't do a lot of time. I've been on these bricks. I did time. I ain't do a lot. So I've been out here seeing through all this shit. You know what I mean? But however you see it is how you see it. You know? Let me let me ask you something. You had mentioned earlier the, the, the switching of 
gangster the hoodster. Do you know who coined the phrase hoodster? Man, nah, man, I can't say put no one particular person on that, man. That's, I, man, I mean, you'll hear so many different lies. Because, I mean, two people can have the same thought in different places. You know what I'm saying? Or one person can think he started it because he he's seen it before the next man. You know what I mean? But Hustlers, off the neighborhood, Hustlers come from TV. You know what I'm saying? Hoodlers, Hustlers. So you might have seen the TV program and you wrote it on the wall, thought you was the first one, but that don't make it true. That only make it true in your mind. That's why I say perception is a reality, man. Uh, I, L Little Banker told me Jay Stone coined it. Well, J. Cole could have coined it for the people he was around. I, I'm not going to argue with that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But I know we was writing a whole lot of shit on the wall. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, so it was like, I don't know where he got it from. But like I say, you can have you can have two people with the same idea that don't know each other, never talk to each other. So I, I don't I don't get into the semantics of it, you know what I mean? But this is what I do know. In the beginning, we was writing what was written on the wall. You know what I mean? So if one person, like, just like niggas used to write the word neighborhood all the way out. So who started the end hood? You know what I'm saying? When it was jumping off all it, just like with the gangsters. You know, or whoever. You know, who started what? You, you can't just sit there and give that to one person because we'll never know the truth. But everybody going to claim something that they figure they can claim. You know what I mean? Let me switch it again. Did you uh, did you see Kev Max Shoreline interview? Yeah. What did you think about that? Man, I, I mean, it was interesting. I got a lot of uh, uh, history for us, how Venice was built. You know what I mean, but a lot of the other stuff I don't I don't agree with it because for it like me, I'm one of the kind of niggas that whenever we, my crew we went wherever we went, I, we didn't give a fuck. We showed up, showed up. You know what I'm saying? We wasn't tripping on niggas. You know what I'm saying? We unless they trip, we tripped on niggas. You know, but if niggas going to if we going to Venice Beach or, or whatever, we going to do our thing with them and, and have some fun. We weren't worried about who beach it was. It didn't matter because we gonna show up. You know, even in the 80s, we and Nelson, we was going over there first Indica that we bought come from a little park for these white boys in Venice. Well, let me ask you this. What, 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 what was our relationship with Black Dog? Black Dog grew up in the hood. He was just a real nigga. Because, see, like, back then, before all the division, you fuck with real dudes. Black Dog was a real dude, you know what I'm saying? And he used to function with us a little bit because he grew up in the hood, and he was a rider. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, he used to come up to Chris Shaw and me and like that. We might walk back to the hood with him, talk to him. He was just a real dude. He'd do stag them, you know what I mean? And that that's particularly what it is. But he was Venice Shoreline. You know, matter of fact, he was the first Venice Shoreline I ever met. I didn't even know it was Crips way over there. You know what I mean? And that was like 74, 74 about 75. So as long as his black dog was in the hood, he claimed Venice Shoreline from point A to, to point B. The always Venice Shoreline. I ain't never know them claim nothing different. You know what I'm saying? And who did he, who did who was his crew as far as over here? Who did he function with? Well, I mean like TQ, Stag, them. You know, he he was a real dude, so he engaged with a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't run with a black dog. He was just like a, a big homie, more or less. You know what I'm saying? And it was never no issue with him living over here. What kind of issue? No. Nah, well, I mean, no at the end of the day, they end up being enemies. Yeah, you know, but that's, like you said, at the end of the day. But in the morning time, he wasn't the enemy. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't, it wasn't no beast like that. The beast didn't start to 79, bro. And then the city hadn't even divided yet. You know, when we couldn't work it out with the eight trays, the holes, that's when the city started fissuring and niggas start picking sides. You know, we used to go, to, like, me, myself, I can't speak for nobody else. I used to go into, uh, into fucking to Grape Street, though, over there. And be fucking with Sid and, and uh, uh, Whip and, uh, and uh, AJ, Solo, all them dudes. And then one day, I didn't even know we was enemies with them. I'm riding that 103rd coming from San Miguel house from probably getting a sack or something. I see six old killer on the wall. You know what I mean? So it was a lot of divisions that came late in the game. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? But I'm that same guy that was selling dope in the Nicholson's too for a minute. You know what I mean? Until they like, oh man, uh, you know, I guess they like, oh man, he can't be over here too much longer. You know what I'm saying? Now that you mentioned that, when the, when the, during the Shoreline interview, they they mentioned that there was homies in their project serving. Do you know what homies that was? Nah, because I, I mean the homies was like to say, man, we was a big hood, so you cannot keep up with everybody and everybody moves. So niggas, you know, but we was all, I mean, we always. It, um, how, what's the word to you? 
we always um, uh, encourage people to go out, spread that, get your money, and do you wherever you at. Don't be fearful. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, you know when you can't stand it no more. You know if it's, you know what I mean? You got to use your common sense. You know, like me, I said, you know, I had spots everywhere. But I kept on a low pro, uh, a low f footprint, but they knew who I was and what I was about. You know what I'm saying? I'm not finna sit up here and be bragging like I'm a superhero or nothing, but I got my bread. I went where the fuck I wanted to go, and I wasn't running from nobody. You know what I'm saying? Even when they tried to bring the heat, I'm gonna stay right there and take it until I can't. You know what I'm saying? So it was, it was like that. So niggas be everywhere. Just like the other people be used to come in our hood. We find out they didn't like them, they gotta go. Not, same, same shit. Not, you know not, what not what you, that you, now that you mentioned that, it, it was told to me that once upon a time, you know, that Whitey Enterprise and that third world situation, third world had spots on 63rd and Crenshaw once upon a time. A spot. A spot on 11th Avenue, 63rd. They was under control. They paid their way. They, you know what I mean? All that. You know, a couple of niggas fucked with them, but for the most part, they wasn't fucking. They doing their little thing. But we had them where we wanted them. You know what I'm saying? And we, we was getting our little bread out of that shit. You know, and wasn't nothing free in America over there. You know what I'm saying? Nothing free over there. You know what I mean? But then, you know, it all depends on, you know, what happened. Then after, you know, niggas started tightening up. But I mean, at that time, see, see, when the dope game came on, it changed a whole lot of shit. You know what I mean? Because especially with, with, with niggas that I come up with. Because, you know, we was them pistol bandits. You know what I'm saying? That's how we was getting our bread. We was rough hustling. It wasn't no finesse and shit. Even though we had pimps and all that shit in. Like I say, nigga was high signing way back in the days. Nigga burn up hundred dollar bills to you say stop. And that was for the dope money come out. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't like no shortage of paper. You might have been in the wrong game if you was broke or you didn't have that heart to get that money. But when the dope game came out, there's a whole lot of money hit LA. So niggas was trying to just it was just so much clientele, you trying to just improve. You know what I'm saying? And there's certain people can stand spots, so you want all that. Niggas have spots everywhere. You know what I'm saying? So that's that wasn't nothing uncommon. But over there, if somebody find out you ain't from over there, you might get a pass for a little while, but pretty soon, somebody's going to be at your door. You know what I mean? Do, 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 do you look at the dope game as the beginning of the end of, of gang banging in L.A.? Is that what destroyed it? As, well, as, as you know it, as I know it? As I know it, because it, 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 it was... The difference to me, and this is only my perception, right? Before cocaine hit it, in order to get some money, you had to be solid, you know what I'm saying? Because you hear rough us was a motherfucker. I mean, whether it was pickpocketing, shooting dice, even dice games, get your head kept at sitting on a park if you wasn't real or anywhere in the city. Anybody that grew up shooting dice back in the 70s, you already know. It's going to be an argument, you're going to get checked. To get real money, you was, you was robbing some or jacking some. You know what I'm saying? And then so you had a lot of, in my opinion, a lot of rough niggas that was getting that money. A lot of serious niggas, hard niggas getting money, whether it was burglarizing, car thieving, and all that. It took heart to get some money. When the dope came, came, it was like all you had to do was sell some dope, didn't get high. The money came to you. You didn't have to go get it. All you had, the money comes to you. But there's some of them cats, not all of them, it's a bunch of real niggas that sold dope. But it was a whole bunch of niggas that got their pockets pulled down before that dope gang came. Now they got some money, so they start buying uh, buying uh, soldiers, pretty much, because they had their money. And certain niggas can be bought, certain niggas get, uh, get purchased. You see, like, and, and then certain crews are like, nigga, fuck that money, this is where I'm from. I'm going to have more money, you're going to get my money, but you can't buy me, nigga. You still, in my eyes, you still that nigga we used to pull their pockets down. You know what I mean? So, but them guys, once them guys that wasn't as hard or wasn't as down, they've been watching TV, so they can only react to what they think real niggas do. So they put poison in a lot of niggas that can be influenced to go against the, the wolf, the wolf pack. You know what I'm saying? Because now, because the wolf pack on their ass, you know what I mean? So now they try to buy this nigga and get this wolf. You know, you got a motherfucking a shepherd over some sheep. You know what I mean? <laughs> let, let get this one. You know what I mean? So, so, so the, it, dope, the dope game was basically a gift and a curse at the same time. It was a gift and a curse because there was a lot of money. The guns changed. You know what I mean? You know, even the females changed. Everything changed, man. People started losing their house. But it was just so much money. 
And then you now, so many niggas is having money, you know, and then it's like, hey, you chasing niggas, they, you know what I mean? You trying to get your bread, you, you selling dope, you know what I mean? Money, motherfucker, like, like, they say money is the rule of all evil. Yeah, but it's the, it, it, it's the thing that you need to get by, too. So it's, it's that balance, you know what I mean? It's a double-edged sword. I, I, don't think it's, I don't think it's the root of all evil. It, it depends on the individual who has that money, their, yeah. their, their mindset. Yeah, but, but what I'm saying is this, it's a double-edged sword. A double-edged sword cuts you deep both ways, whether it's sinking to the left or to the right, up or down. You, you feel me? So, so what it is is like, okay, a lot of real niggas got money, whatever, whatever, but it was a lot of niggas that was weak got that money too. So now, Wolves is after them niggas, you know what I'm saying? Niggas was getting put in trucks back then, you know what I'm saying? And then it was just like, okay, but now they got that bread now, so they can get a little, they can buy them a little private army or little whatever, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Because I mean, if you fucking with the ninja suit niggas like we was doing, you know what I'm saying, and all that shit, that, that's a whole different uh, a program, you know what I mean? But it was a whole lot of money, so. You know, what can I say, man? I can't knock another nigga down. You're you saying it's a, it was a whole a whole bunch of money citywide. It, it, what was was Joe Rat serving enemies during that time? Was man, his, were, were, were enemies on his clientele list? Man, I don't know a dope dealer that didn't have enemies on his clientele list. It was about money, man. Get your money. You fuck with real dudes no matter where, where they function from. I mean, Joe did a lot for the hood, too. You know what I mean? I helped a lot of niggas. I never was rich as Joe, you know what I mean, for that, but I got my bread. But, like, I mean, you function how you function, man. You fuck with different real niggas. Like I said, I had spots everywhere, you know what I mean, Hoover Hood. You know, I had a spot over there for, yeah, 6th or 7th and over there, Nixon's for a minute, you know what I mean? So I don't have no problem with, with, with Joe had spots in the 20s everywhere, you know what I mean? He was just a money getting dude. Because once you start getting that kind of money, man, you got to reach out. You know what I'm saying? If you're gonna really, really grow, that's how you become millionaires. And I think, um, I think the successful dope dealers in the city, all of them had that same playbook. You know what I mean? They put money over gangbanging. You know what? They 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 did have that playbook, but but, but one one thing they didn't have inside that playbook that it seems to me, no one actually invested in in, in real property, real assets, because all of them ended up broke and desolate. Yeah, but in the beginning, like, but see, it goes back to the you, beginning. You go from a millionaire to, to nothing. Yeah, but it goes back to this here, though. A lot of people in the beginning that have the uh, the experience of other people's failures. You know what I mean? So if you never knew how to invest in houses and all that, and you just had this money, all you knew about is high sided buying cars, fucking bitches, traveling, gambling. You know what I'm saying? And then you might catch a case and you might not be able to catch back up. See, I'm a victim of that. I had a whole bunch of money a whole lot of times. I fucked it off. Because, you know, I didn't, I didn't have my parents went, went all what I was doing. They wouldn't man, buy this house over here, which a nigga could afford. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I can't knock another man down. Then you had other people who had to sense that whether it was them or their parents told them, nigga, buy this house. Do this with that money. Do something good with it. You know what I'm saying? So I can't knock. Uh, uh, not nobody because they was up and then, then they was down. You know, there wasn't I, no uh, 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 industry for like entertainment and all that kind of shit where you can invest money. There wasn't a whole lot of millionaires. So I, I used to watch know. the homies lose tens of thousands of dollars behind Cal's house gambling. And back then, it seemed like every homie was at minimum a hundred thousand there. Yeah. And then I look at the the, the, the property prices at that time. A hundred thousand, a hundred and sixty thousand. Yeah. Uh, then I think about like, damn, the homies. Seventy thousand, fifty. Back then, when the homies was really rich, rolling, they could have fucking bought up the whole turf. Yeah, there's no question about that. But it goes back to what you know, and what what, what it's, it's just like that, like 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 cats like me. If you don't learn nothing else from me, then don't do what I did. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you've seen our failures. You know, we, I mean, we might have been down on a, a game bang to get money to this, that. But, but, but the generation now, they took a little further. They they are real millionaires, got solid shit, they got houses, 
they got this, they got that. When we was coming up, what the, not a lot of us, nobody was whispering in our ear. Like, take the, uh, uh, if you hit a lick for 200000 what nobody whispering in your ear, talking about go buy this house, go buy that house. You going to get you a pimp out of apartment somewhere, hide away, or you going to be shooting dice. We didn't have that kind of educational thing. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of that shit went on. You know what I mean? But, like, experience is the only thing that's real in this world. So if you sitting back young, just like when we was young, we seen all the shit that we didn't want to do from the older dudes that way, and we seen a lot of shit that we did want to do. You know, we didn't have the people that was like entrepreneurs. You know, but then, like I say, but that's one thing that the dope game brought too. It was like a lot of square niggas whose parents were square. Like, man, you got this money. I'm going to let you sell it up. I don't want you to, but I can invest this and that. So you had a lot of people that got that kind of guidance. Then you had a lot of those who just come up hustling didn't have that kind of guy. Got it by, but like now, niggas know. You know, but back then in the money, it was just a whole lot of money just moving fast with niggas in their 20s. You know, you your dick is hard as Chinese trigonometry. You just try to get a bitch, you know what I mean, and do your shit. You know, and high side, get your uh, nice ass car, do whatever. Unless you had some parents behind you that cared. Because a lot of us didn't have that. Even though we had uh, a whole family, our family, like, like mom just take my money and fix the house up, whatever, you know what I'm saying? But it wasn't like my stepdad, you know, was, was going to pull me to the side, like buy this house when I could have bought three, four houses on the block. You know what? You when, know you, what when, you, when you say that, I'm, I'm reflecting on all the interviews that me and Kev do, and we always dig into the, the, the interviewee's history and where their family come from. Basically, a lot of our parents and grandparents were country boys, yeah. you know what I'm saying, coming to California, so they didn't have that entrepreneur Spirit, you know what I'm saying. Some of them did, but most did. Most of them was running from 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 racism in the South. You know what I'm saying, or, or from the Northwest, wherever they came from. They were looking for a better opportunity. They just wanted to work, raise their family, and not be worried about the class. Right. They, they weren't fi financially literate. Is what I'm trying to say. You know what I'm uh, saying. Not a lot of them. Yeah. And then when I when I look at what's going on in Venice, Blue class the, 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 these dudes have, have lost a multi million dollar neighborhood. They they sat on that neighborhood for for a hundred years, yeah, and, and lost it. Yeah, and, and, and it's, it's worth millions now. And then I look at all these neighborhoods we're, now, we're losing ours too, and, and, and we're all losing our neighborhoods. Gentrification. See, like, look, another thing, like, like back when I was growing up, right in the seventies. People was aware. We used to sweat the liquor store on uh, on, on, on Forest and, and Fifth Ave, try to extort it, you know, especially Bayard and all that, for little crumbs and shit, you know what I'm saying, or whatever, you know, cause, and that was just one little change. It was, but, it was Korean owned back then? Yeah, that was just good, and they used to let you buy, how they used to get us, we 15 years old, we go buy liquor, all that kind of shit, that's how they really got past us, really extorting and pushing the line. But see, all that, you know, like when 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 I when I first came out here to live, my brother didn't grow up out here. When I came out here in 71, 72, it was still whites on the block, still white area, right? So I the white flight was just happening because my after the watch riot is when my parents and them moved off the east side over there. So you had little white friends on Second Avenue? Nah, these are older people. There wasn't no white kids over there, none, none of that. It was just older people that didn't, couldn't afford to just up and leave because they too old. But there was still a few whites in there. I ain't seen a white kid. Maybe I, was, I know one minority that was that horse man when I was there, it was Jimmy Hewitt. There might have been another one over there. I don't know if you remember the, the mayor of L.A., uh, 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 Han. Yeah, Kim Hines he, stayed on 79. Yeah. Around the corner from C Dub. Okay, you know. Yeah, that. yeah, I know all that. C Dub right. was real cool with him. Jessica Hines, all the motherfuckers. You know what I mean? Right behind C Dub House. Right there. So, so let me ask you this, since we're speaking on racial issues. In in the eighties, I don't know if you're aware of this, we had a Mexican population off of High Park in in the in Clan the Clantons. Yeah. And they used to write RSC 14 on the wall, like they was clicked up with us. Yeah, kind of sort of, yeah. What's the story behind the C-14s in the well, 60s? Well, well.
cruising takes place in the heart of the turf. Big cow snatching chains, shaking up the trunk as you riding down the boulevard. Big booty bitches popping pussy in your face. But if you wasn't rolling, 30s to the hundreds catch you sipping, shooting bullets that would empty out the space. Girls start to scream as the shots ring. Niggas start to run. Oh well, we'll be back next week. We gotta watch out for them Cab Max. Them niggas didn't play with you, get your face smacked. Baby S Max striking up the whole hood. Welcome to the boulevard.